Thank you for joining us for another Series NRX accessory tutorial video. In this video, we will demonstrate how to install and remove a Kirk Key Lock. The Kirk Key Lock is an additional safety locking feature that provides controlled operation of the circuit breaker. The key interlock secures the breaker in the off position, and without a key, the breaker cannot be turned on. Disclaimer. Before proceeding with the installation and or removal of any accessory, always de-energize the primary and secondary circuits. If you have a draw breaker, make sure it is levered out to the disconnect position. Finally, all circuit breakers should be switched to the off position and all mechanism springs should be discharged. Failure to follow any of these precautions could result in death, bodily injury, and property damage. To install a Kirk key lock, you will need all of the following tools and parts. One, number two, Phillips head screwdriver, one flat head screwdriver, one pair of pliers, one key lock kit which is supplied from Eaton and includes the following, one self-adhesive external protective ring, one support washer, one metal mounting bracket, two fiber retaining washers, two M 3x5 millimeter mounting screws, one large locking nut, one key lock lever, two machine screws. You will also need the Kirk key lock cylinder, number KC40.10 and the Kirk key, which are not included in the kit and must be ordered directly from Kirk. In this section we will demonstrate how to remove the front cover and how to move the secondary mounting bracket. For this demonstration we will use a three-pole UL1066 draw out circuit breaker. Before proceeding with the installation, you must remove the front cover of the circuit breaker. If you have a three-pole breaker, you must remove the four non-captive screws with the number two Phillips head screwdriver. If you have a four-pole breaker, there are six screws to be removed. Make sure you save the screws for reinstallation. Once you've done this, pull down on the charging handle for easy removal of the cover from the breaker. The secondary mounting bracket, which is located at the top of the breaker, must be loosened in order to access the key lock mounting location. To do this, you must locate the three screws that hold the mounting bracket in place and remove them with the number two Phillips head screwdriver. You do not need to remove any wires or connectors in order to move the secondary mounting bracket. In this section, we will demonstrate how to construct the key lock assembly, install the key lock, punch a hole in the front cover, and reattach the front cover. After you've removed the front cover from the circuit breaker and shifted the secondary mounting bracket, there is one more important step you must take before you assemble your Kirk key lock. Before you proceed, you must remove the key from the lock. I repeat, you must remove the key from the lock cylinder. If you do not, the inside pieces of the lock cylinder will explode from the cylinder when you remove the lever arm, causing permanent damage. Now that you've removed the key, Remove the lever arm that was installed on the cylinder when you received the kit. You will need a flathead screwdriver to do so. After you've removed the lever arm, throw it away. Next, push the plastic support washer onto the back end of the key lock. And then slide the key lock into the mounting bracket. Slide 
Secure the key lock in place with the large locking nut by firmly tightening the nut against the back of the mounting bracket. Now that the key lock is secured to the mounting bracket, you can attach the new lock lever to it with the two machine screws that were supplied in the kit in a number one Phillips head screwdriver. We've removed the front cover, shifted the secondary mounting bracket, and assembled the key lock. The last phase of this process involves mounting the key lock assembly to the circuit breaker and ensuring that it's functional. Locate the mounting location. It is right below the secondary mounting bracket. There are two threaded mounting holes in the mounting tab. Using the two mounting screws and two fiber retaining washers, Screw the key lock assembly halfway into the mounting location and then stop. Before firmly securing the assembly, use a pair of pliers to pull the plastic push button plate out so the bracket sheet metal tab slides in behind it. Once the metal tab is behind the push button tab, you can finish tightening the mounting screws. Once the assembly is firmly secured to the mounting location, insert the key and turn. Reattach the secondary mounting bracket by tightening the three screws you loosened earlier. In order to punch a hole in the cover, you need a rigid support that is slightly larger than the outline of the hole. In this demonstration, we are using a one and a half inch by three and three eighths inch pipe and a hammer. Place the rigid support flush with the hole on the underside of the cover. This will create support and will prevent the cover from splintering since the pipe is slightly larger than the hole. Hit the top side of the hole with the hammer. Make certain that all pieces and or particles are removed from the inside of the hole before proceeding. Once you've punched the hole, attach the external adhesive ring to the breaker. After you've completed the installation, you must reattach the front cover of the circuit breaker. To do this, first pull down on the manual charging handle, then position the front cover on the breaker. Make sure the cover fits inside the side sheet tabs. 
Once the front cover is properly positioned, secure it to the breaker with the four non-captive screws you removed earlier. Make sure you secure all of the screws that you previously removed. In this section, we will perform a functional test. To begin, press the red button down while rotating the key counterclockwise. Next, remove the key and charge the breaker. Once the breaker is charged, try to push the green button, push to close. The breaker should not close. Next, insert the key and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Press the green button again. This time, it should work. In this section, we will demonstrate how to properly remove the Kirk key lock from the Series NRX breaker. First, remove the cover and loosen the secondary mounting bracket. We demonstrated these processes earlier in the video. Next, use the number 2 Phillips head screwdriver to loosen the two mounting screws, then remove the mounting bracket and key lock from the mounting location. This completes the Kirk Key Lock tutorial. For additional tutorials and information on Eaton Series NRX circuit breakers, please visit us at eaton.com slash series NRX. For questions or further support, please contact your local Eaton sales representative.